Good evening, and welcome to the Council meeting of February 28, 2022. I would like to remind our Council and citizens that February is African Heritage Month in Nova Scotia. I hope that folks have taken the opportunity to learn more of the long-standing history of the people of African descent in Canada and Nova Scotia. This meeting is being held in chambers. We are observing COVID-19 protocols. You will note that members of Council are seated at their carols. It is re requested that members wear their masks unless speaking. Staff and citizens are spaced around the room to ensure six feet separation. Citizens must remain in their seats unless departing the chamber or rising to speak and must wear their masks at all times while in the chamber. The meeting is being live streamed on, the, on Facebook Live and the most up-to-date meeting package is on the Town of Kentville website. This meeting is called to order. Have all of the councillors received and reviewed their meeting package? Does any member of council have information pertaining to a matter before this council which has not been publicly circulated? I will remind members of council that we are in decision-making mode and we should be mindful of our decision-making wheel. We have committed to making balanced and respectful decisions and adhering to our code of conduct. We will be voting by electronic means for all votes except administrative. Are there any conflict of interest issues we should be aware of before the meeting commences? Councillor Sabian. Yes, Mayor Snow, item 4B. Thank you. Noted. CAO Trope, could you please take the roll call? Thank you, Mayor Snow. Tonight, all members of council are here, so we have quorum for tonight's meeting. Thank you very much, uh, CAO Trope. Uh, Deputy Mayor Savage, could you please take the chair for approval of the agenda? And the time is uh, Good evening. We've been provided with a proposed agenda and I have received two items for addition to the agenda. The code of conduct items have been circulated to council and I would ask for a motion to add these two items to the agenda under new business should council wish to do so. Councillor Zabian, second. Councillor Maxwell? Yes, sorry, I'm just looking. <laughs> um, discussion? No discussion on that. Okay, that's fine. We'll move to the request for decisions that... Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Just give me one second here. I'm going to... Yes, please. I would like to uh, make a motion to... Uh, remove the items under new business code of conduct 6A 1 and 2 from the agenda please okay so we have a motion on the table right now with respect to the two new items the code of conduct that's that was circulated to council we have a second on that I think we have to go with that motion first before completing the, before there's any more additional, correct? Okay, thank you. Okay, so all in. Deputy Mayor, if, yes. I, if I might just clarify your process. Sure, sure. Do we have a motion on the floor right now to approve the agenda? No. no. So the, uh, uh, you can proceed with that motion if you, if you have, but I suggest that the starting point Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go with that motion first. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. 
everybody is clear on the motion? Yeah. Can Go I ahead. just say one quick thing? Just let me... Yes, go ahead. Thank you. So the, the items that are on, um, sorry, Deputy Mayor, um, item 6A, 1 and 2, are essentially of the same format as the two items that we're voting on now. Just different, different violations of the code, but they're the same. And these ones are already approved on the agenda, unless after this one someone goes in and decides to delete them, if we vote collectively. So what, what council's voting on tonight is whether we allow right. them to be included in this meeting's agenda. Right, but right now we're just dealing with the two additional ones, not Correct. the ones that are already there. Correct. Okay. Yep. So essentially, if we, sh yeah, my, just, we should either deal with all four or not, I guess, would be my stance. But anyway. Yeah, so you. what I'm doing is the, the first motion first. Okay. Yep, with respect to the, the motion that ones. you made. Okay. Yep, with Thank respect you. to your two uh, okay. agenda items. Thank you. Any other questions around the motion? No? Oh, okay. So the motion, the voting is open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Voting is closed. Okay, the motion is carried. Okay, so Councillor Maxwell, yeah. could you Councillor Maxwell, can I ask you to repeat your motion? Yes, I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, now. It would be to remove items 6, 1, 2, 3, and 4 from the agenda. 6A, 1, 2, 3, and 4, so all the breaches, because I am very sure that these violate the process outlined in the code of conduct. So um, I believe that placing these breaches on the agenda uh, negates the entire investigative process. It's been ignored, as well as the important role council plays in that process. And this would basically condemn the individuals without their having the ability to speak to allegations. And uh, placing these on the agenda without any investigation is, in my opinion, vindictive, demeaning, and a way of continuing to stir animosity and create division on our council. And so if we follow the process, um, 4.151, very clearly explains what the process is. And section 4.13.3 that says we can go to um, public, uh, an open session would be uh, only if the mayor or the deputy mayor who is supposed to bring those allegations to council does not do their job in doing that. And okay. then someone on council could bring them to uh, to council in an open session, but jumping right to open session um, violates the process written in our code of conduct. So, Councillor Maxwell, just to condense your motion, yep. can you repeat just yep. what your motion is? My just to motion, delete. My oops. motion is to delete uh, from the agenda tonight, um, new under new business six A, one, two, three, and four. We have a motion on the table. Do I have anybody who wishes to second that motion? Councillor York seconds the motion. Discussion. Councillor Zabian. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So just, I wouldn't mind a little clarity on this because this is the first time that we've seen this um, come forward. Um, is there supposed to be an investigation? I read that thoroughly, and I don't know if it's if the wording is not quite there. I don't know who can chime in, maybe. And 
is this the process that should have been followed or should there have been, because I know it says there as well, and I'm not going to obviously get into the actual items, but it says in that code of conduct that the mayor should reach out to the individual first and talk to them um, before they, they bring them to council. So I'm just wondering how we got to this point or when we get to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zabian and Solicitor Matart. I'm going to find you. Podium. Podium. Do you want to go up to the podium? So your your council is struggling with process this evening, and uh, adding items to the agenda is not the opportunity to talk about the items, it's simply to get them on the agenda. Council already added two of the four items that Councillor Maxwell has asked to be stricken. And I can't run your meeting for you, but on this occasion, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> chime in and say, you've already added them. It's your very last motion. You can't examine them here again. You've added them. And what you do with them when they come up on the agenda can be all of this discussion. Mm -hmm. Just decide whether you're going to discuss them, okay? You're not necessarily investigating them or doing anything else. You're deciding what to do with them if they're on the agenda. Okay, folks? So the uh, uh, Councillor Zabian already added two items. I would suggest that if I was running the meeting, I would find that motion to be out of order. You can't revisit them, you just added them. The most that uh, Councillor Maxwell could do would be asked to remove the first two items that were the two, uh, I believe they're two code of conduct items brought by the mayor. And then if whatever remains on the agenda, when you get to those items, you'll talk about what, if anything, you're going to do about them tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Maxwell. Um, based on uh, what the solicitor has said, then I will ask to remove the two items, 6A, 1, and 2, from the agenda. And uh, we can determine um, later uh, what to do with the other two. But uh, again, for the same reason, um, I don't think that discussions um, such as this nature should be taking place um, without any investigation whatsoever. And uh, so, so uh, my motion would be to remove 6A1 and 2. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Yes. So I think that motion needs to be dealt with before we would move to another motion. I was looking more for her to amend her motion. Okay. Yeah. So, do, do, so I don't have to on the second one? As long as you have. As long as you're comfortable with that? Okay. Thanks, Councillor York. Do we have a seconder to Councillor Maxwell's motion? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Are you ready for the question? Can I repeat the motion? Please do. The motion to delete. The motion to delete from the agenda items 6A and 6B. The original two items. 6A, 1 and 2. Yeah, 6A, 1 and 2. Thank you. Voting is now open. Before we finish the vote, does anybody have any questions at all over what we're voting on? Any clarification that's needed? You can change your vote up until now. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Huntley. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're um, welcome. When we talk about taking these, these two right now off the table. Mm -hmm. There are still two more. That Correct. We can, we will be talking about. The, the two that Councillor Zabian added. Correct. Yes. yes. We get a vote then at the, at that time mm -hmm. to do anything with those that we want. They will come to they, a vote. They, they will be discussed at that yeah. time in the agenda. Okay. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Thank You're very you. welcome.
Go ahead. Do we have the option to table the discussion at that point? Just a second. Let me get my one. Please, can you sorry say that again? When we arrive to uh, item six, if um, with the newly added uh, three and four, mm -hmm. do we have the option if one and two are removed to then table discussion for three and four? Does that make sense what I'm asking? I can just get greater clarity. I think what you're asking is can the entire discussion one, two, three, and four be tabled or just specific ones? Because this council's purview literally at that moment to, to do, to do mm -hmm. what they want to do. Jeff, just one moment, solicitor. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I just came up here in case the CAO needed some support, and he doesn't. But uh, if I could just repeat what he said, you can do mm -hmm. with any item on the agenda. You can do anything, okay? Anything the rules allow you to do. So you can table if all four are on the agenda. You can table all four. You can ask for more information. You can do whatever you want when you get to them on the agenda. So whatever survives... Um, the approval of the agenda is what you're going to deal with, and you can deal with it, like I say, in whatever manner you want. Thank you. Okay. Voting is now closed. And the motion is defeated. defeated. Okay. Moving along. There are a number of requests for decisions that are included on the agenda. Um, the first one uh, is, and, and I'm still talking about the agenda. We haven't, we haven't uh, approved the agenda yet. The first one is around the public forum, the RFD for the public forum. Um, that one in particular, um, my comment around that was that the public forum decision uh, was already taken and the CAO was, uh, was directed um, to cancel the January 2022 meeting because of the COVID restrictions. And then we had tasked him with finding a new date um, as soon as the restrictions lifted. So um, it, the CAO is pursuing, uh, pursuing that under council's direction. So I didn't see it necessary to have the RFD included on the agenda because it had already been uh, been dealt with. That was just a comment around that. Does anybody have any other comments around that? Okay. Um, the other one was was with regards to the RFD around meeting agendas. Um, uh, I don't see it on, sorry. Oh yes, I'm sorry, yes, of course, yes. Councillor Zavian. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that as long as we do have a date secured soon for the mm -hmm. RFD, so that's all I'm looking for. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, the other one, the request for decision um, around the meeting agendas. Um, uh, this one was brought forward at the last CAC in February, February 14th, and it was determined that we would have a separate uh, open meeting, of course, with outside um, assistance. One, certainly, f you know, a facilitator who's uh, well-versed in municipal procedural bylaws and codes of conduct. So um, that was something that was that was already dealt with and and the cao has been tasked with that so we're moving forward on that so i didn't see any reason for that to remain on the agenda deputy mayor if i might i'm, I'm concerned about the process i could just maybe turn my mic around if you mind um i'd encourage you to adopt the agenda the these sound like updates for the agenda items themselves if they're going to be removed, this is why I think it's important that a motion hit the floor to approve the agenda as circulated, and then if there are gonna be motions, uh, sub-motions to amend it or remove items, then those can come forward. But the agenda's been circulated to council. Correct. And uh, uh, I think you need to put the motion on the floor to, uh, to approve it. And uh, it's not a reason to remove items 
um, uh, giving an update before them because if the item's not on the agenda, then there shouldn't be discussion, there shouldn't be anything in the minutes about it. And, uh, uh, and what I'm hearing are items that will end up in the minutes, updates about the particular items. And that may be all that happens because it is old business, so it may simply be an update from the CAO on each of those items so that they would then appear in the minutes. Yeah, it was, it was more around if, they've, if they're items that have already been dealt with, why would they then form part of the agenda for the council meeting tonight? Well, but then that's the debate that happens and the discussion that happens once you have the motion on the floor to approve the agenda. So as part of the discussion, then uh, members of, of council can raise the issue to remove particular items and uh, the discussion uh, and around once the agenda has been motioned and seconded yes is that what you're okay yeah so then it's so then it's on the table and there's something to actually discuss okay, okay. thank you solicitor i will ask for a motion to accept the agenda as amended okay. councillor york seconded councillor huntley all in favor okay Motion carried. Mayor Snow, could you please take the chair? The minutes of the January 31st, 2022 Council meeting have been distributed for approval. If there are no changes, the minutes are approved as distributed. If there are changes, the recording secretary will annotate the minutes and the annotated minutes will be added to the electronic meeting file as approved. Uh, are there any issues uh, with the minutes uh, as circulated? None, moving along then, thank you very much. Uh, we're now uh, moving on to our business arising. Uh, the first uh, item is uh, second reading of the amendment to the land use bylaw for auxiliary dwelling units. Uh, the recommendation based on the results of the public hearing held this evening at uh, 5 p.m. Second reading is recommended. So we would have a motion that council approve second reading of the land use bylaw amendment on the matter of ancillary dwelling units to align the maximum square footage of the ADUs within a single family dwelling with the National Building Code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitations on the number of bedrooms, and allow attached ADU garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling not to exceed 1,000 square feet. If someone could move that, please. Councillor York, thank you. And for a second, Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the second reading of the Land Use Bylaw Amendment on the matter of ADUs to align the maximum square footage for ADUs within a single family dwelling with the National Building Code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitations on the number of bedrooms and allow detached ADU garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area in, of the main dwelling not to exceed 1,000 square feet. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve second, second reading of the land use bylaw amendment on the matter of ADUs to align the maximum square footage for the ADUs within a single family dwelling with the National Building Code, which is 80% of the gross floor space area of the main dwelling up to a maximum of 80 square meters without limitations on the number of bedrooms and allow detached ADU garden suites to have a maximum floor area of 80% of the gross floor area of the main dwelling not to exceed 1,000 square feet. Voting is now open.
voting is now closed and the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Our next item of uh, business uh, comes in the form of a request for decision with regards to the Robinson property. And uh, I would uh, ask, um, and the time is uh, 26 minutes after six o'clock when Councillor Zabian steps away from the Carols. And I would call on Councillor Maxwell to uh, put forth um, the, uh, the discussion on this matter. Oh, I turn, wait, you, you've turned your, your mic off. Okay, sorry. Okay, now it's on. All right, thank you very much. Um, first thing I, that I want to do is uh, let Council know that this motion is not a reconsideration motion, uh, nor is it a motion to rescind the motion that was passed to enact the buyback clause on uh, Mike's clothing on October 21st, or 25th. Uh, that original motion was passed um, but at the time, no action had been taken. That motion was directly dealing with only the motion to initiate the buyback. My effort failed and action was initiated. This is a new motion addressing the action that has now been taken. New information is the legal process the town of Kentville is now experiencing. Um, this motion is an effort to stop the financial drain on the taxpayers of the town of Kentville to continue a legal action. The action being pursued now could drag on for a very long time. All the while, the land sits costing taxpayers money rather than generating money. The financial cost is not the only fallout from this action taken on October 25th. The disruption to this council has been exposed for all to see and citizens are not happy. We are one day away from the month that construction was to begin. And as far as I know, um, a court date has not even been set yet. I'm not a lawyer, but I'd, I have heard that court dates are usually not set soon. So it could be assumed this will drag on for some time, all the while costing the taxpayers of the town. So this motion is to deal with the action that has already been taken um, because of the October 25th motion and allow construction to begin. This motion represents what I believe is in the best interest of the municipality, um, which I am supposed to do um, according to the Code of Conduct 4.6.1. And so the motion is there. Um, I would like to move that council stop the legal action against Mike's clothing and allow the development of the land to begin. And I'll add as previously scheduled. Are you moving that? Yes, please. Uh, so is this, um, is this not a rescind the legal action as opposed to stop the legal action? I suppose we could use the word rescind, but it's not the same motion as to rescind the buyback. You're asking that council rescind the legal action taken against Mike's clothing and allow the development of the land to begin. Is that correct? Well, no. I like the word stop because that means there has to be a negotiation in order to stop it. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Is, do we have a seconder for this motion? Do we have a seconder for the motion? The motion falls to the floor and uh, does, not, uh, does not proceed. Thank you. Moving on to our next item of, uh, of business. Councillor returns 
at uh, 30 minutes after 6. So our next uh, item is uh, the request for decision on the uh, Hyde Gates plow. Um, this matter was brought before council on the, uh, at the CAC meeting on the 14th of February during staff reports. And at the time, the CAO uh, was directed to investigate the use of the equipment, reporting back to council at next CAC. Is, uh, is that correct, C CAO? Correct. Uh, therefore, there's no requirement uh, for that uh, to be on, uh, on the agenda. So we're moving on to the recommendations. And um, uh, yep. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I just, I was hearing um, Solicitor Matard, and it's like you skipped my three RFPs. I know Deputy Mayor had made some comments, but I took the time to write those, and it's just like you bypassed everything that I brought forward. I, I thought they were removed as part of the amended agenda. Well, I don't think anybody removed them. The solicitor said to accept the agenda. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, they can be okay, removed. Okay, then my, no, listen, sure, yeah. my, my, my error. Thank you. Um, I thought they were removed as uh, as part of uh, of the agenda. Um, so, uh, based on the fact that the public forum, we were waiting uh, to have. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say the March 21st uh, gives us uh, full access to right. having a full house. Uh, so the CAO is investigating that. Um, so it will occur after the March 21st. Uh, at the present time, we are looking for a site here in Kentville, which will accommodate enough people as requested. And, uh, and the next one is the meeting agendas, which form part of the G70 policy and, uh, and will be covered uh, under the G70 policy. So all of those items uh, have no decisions uh, required Good. as they've already been taken. Thank you. Am I allowed to speak on my RFP though? Uh, there's no decisions required, so there's... Well, but I want to just speak on the agenda part, because I think that's... I don't understand why we need to go into detail. It's in the policy. It says that there's a call at the beginning of every meeting for agendas. That was the only thing that I wanted to... And I think just by listening to Solicitor Matar tonight, I think there is a process problem here somehow. And I just want to make sure that that's part of every meeting, that there'll be a call for additions or deletions. I think we've proven that there's a problem tonight with all due respect and I think we should probably hammer that out so that people any of us not just me anybody can come in here and and add an item that's because I and I and I understand you know I understand what you said about all of these things but I mean I I've come to meetings in the last year and a half and I've tried to beep in at the beginning and usually not allowed to so I took the time to write them up this time as you request and I am just a little confused because um, Deputy Mayor took your chair and pretty much summarized them and, and kiboshed them before I got to speak on them. I've never seen that happen before and it's a little troubling to me. Um, so, uh, and again, I don't, want, I don't want this to turn into anything that it shouldn't. I'm just, I'm a little bothered that I'm not able to either do the paperwork and put it in or even speak on them with, by buzzing in. So, thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. So my understanding, when we are presented with an agenda and there are items on those agendas, not every item necessarily has to be on an agenda as it's presented, particularly if we've already dealt with those items. And so when I, when I look at the public forum and the meeting agendas, those were fait accomplis. We're, we're already moving ahead with them. So perhaps, perhaps I should have started out with saying I'm confused by the presentation of an RFD over a, a couple of topics where we've already agreed to move forward and there's a plan of action for them. So that, that's sort of where I am with it. And perhaps the, the solicitor can clarify that more. I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, things are added and removed and to an agenda all the time and I'm, I just, I don't understand why they're on the agenda when they've already been dealt with. That's, that's my only Thank comment you. around it. Thank you, Deputy that's Mayor. Councillor Maxwell. 
Thank you. Um, just looking at this um, policy G70, um, it is coming back to council. Am I correct on that? That's correct. Okay. So we've made a change in um, the way that we handle the agenda um, prior to um, this coming back to council after being looked at. So perhaps maybe it would be in our best interest to revert back to the way that we um, handled the agenda until such time as we discuss policy G70 um, as a group and decide what we want to do. Um, according to Robert's rules, uh, you can add and you can um, add items at the meeting to the agenda. And as far as I'm concerned, and, and as far as I always thought, we, our meetings were um, being governed by Robert's rules. And so until such time as council makes a change in that, then I think it might be in everybody's best interest if we revert back. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Zabian. You just shut yourself off. I did. Okay, I, I, you, you don't have control yet. Oh. No, okay. <laughs> Stop. Stop touching it. Here you go. Now you have. All right. Thank you. Um, I have to kind of echo what Councillor Maxwell just said. There was a change um, back in January, just again at the beginning of every meeting, which and I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure all of you feel the same, that when you come into a meeting, things can come up on the weekend or the day of, and you want to bring it to the floor. And if there's no ask at the beginning, um, how do you bring those things forward? I mean, you're going to wait two weeks or a month later to bring them forward, which sometimes doesn't work, right? I mean, a month is a long time. And speaking for myself, I can't speak for anybody in here, but I know I've, I've come um, on, I guess on Zoom or the whatever we're using online and I've buzzed in and I want to add this and I've been told that I, I'm not, not going to be entertained or I need to prepare an RFD so I did do these um, and through the, uh, through the chair um, yeah they were discussed but I, I like to see an outcome so perhaps I shouldn't have, I, perhaps I could have just chimed at the beginning and said I want an update on them but uh, unfortunately I guess I, I've been on both ends if I do the form I'm denied and if I come in and, and chime in, I'm denied. So I just, I'm looking to follow the process and if the process is outlined, and I have the policy here, where it says items can be added at the beginning of the meeting and it doesn't even ask for an RFD to add items. So I don't know why I was ever given that information. Um, that's, yeah, I'm just, you know what, looking to represent the citizens and if there's items that have to come forward, I wanna be able to bring them forward. Whether it's, if you want it on paper or the policy's gonna read that I can buzz in, I just wanna have my, uh, my share, the seven of us here, and able to speak. Thank you. Councillor Gerard. Thank you, Worship. Um, I, I, I do agree with Councillor Zabian. I think um, we've, we've practiced that in the past, but I think there has to be a criteria. We can't, we can't bring something the night of that is going to need a bunch of detail and a bunch of information. So I don't know whether this goes back to Dan or, or whoever, but there, there should be uh, a limit or a cutoff that if you want to bring something, uh, it's got to be time sensitive. Uh, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I, I, don't, I wouldn't like to bring something and spring it on everyone and go, here's a whole bunch of information and you've got no time to read it or go over it. Um, I think we do need a vessel that if something is time sensitive, we can add it to a meeting, um, but I think there has to be boundaries around that. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. RFDs, as outlined in G70, can be brought before council, and they should be. That's part of, that's part of G70. What I was coming to was that the particular items your Worship, that Councillor Zabian brought forward by way of an RFD, the process is correct. It was the content of same. It was the content in as much as those were items that had been dealt with at previous meetings. So perhaps it was the content of the RFD and maybe it, the content of the RFD could have been more around providing an update on timelines or, or what have you. But 
particularly with the G70, um, we decided at our last meeting that we tasked the CAO with, with, uh, with finding an outside facilitator that would bring us through um, the G70 uh, policy and, and how we wish to move forward with that and any changes we want to make or do we want to keep it the same or all those sorts of things. So it, not to get into the minutia of it, but it was more around, I guess, the content of the RFDs and not the process because the process, as far as I'm concerned, was correct. Thank you. All right, thank you. Councillor Maxwell. Thank you. Um, it seems as if we're running around the mulberry bush here. Um, one minute we're talking about RFDs and the next minute we're talking about additions to the agenda. Um, I would suggest that the additions to the agenda are always voted on by council, um, whether we want to add to an agenda or we don't want to add to an agenda at the beginning of a meeting. Um, as for the RFDs, the, you know, we, we know what they are. And I've made a suggestion, now I'll make an emotion, that until such time as we review um, meeting policy G70, we stay with Robert's rules. So you worship. Uh, give me a second here to find your, the floor is yours. So, so your worship, if I could just um, have a say before there's a vote on this motion. This vote motion's not necessary because council has already adopted Robert's rules. Um, and, uh, and so I'll just limit my comments to that for right now, but I would like to have the opportunity to speak uh, after you deal with the motion that's on the floor. Councillor Maxwell, are, uh, are you satisfied with, uh, as uh, the solicitor has said, that that motion is not required as we've already adopted? Uh, I'm perfectly satisfied with that as long as that's what we follow. All right, thank you. Solicitor, the floor is yours. So, folks, um, sometimes it does feel like it's the mulberry bush, Councillor Maxwell. Um, the, uh, uh, there are several different issues here, but they all come back to your agenda and, and how you set the business for your meeting. And you have Robert's rules and you have other policies and you have to look at those together. There are policies that you don't have that many municipal units do have that I have opined in the past that you should have. Um, the, uh, uh, but you have what you have. And, and you do the best that you can with those in establishing your agenda. There's no obligation for the chair of the meeting to ask for additions at the beginning of the meeting. You have every opportunity in advance of the meeting to let people know if you want to make additions. If you've missed your uh, deadlines for submitting requests, ultimately, council decides what's on the agenda. And you may be presented with an agenda that's six pages long, and as a council, you look at it and say, we're not dealing with all this tonight. I don't care that it's on the agenda that was circulated. We're cutting it in half, and this is what we're going to deal with tonight because this is what's important, and the rest important that has to be addressed right now, and the rest can wait for the next meeting uh, or be sent to CAC to look at. Um, and so ultimately, this is the group that controls the agenda. This is the group that controls the rules that applies to this group. And the... Um, uh, and it really isn't rocket science, although it can sometimes be difficult to deal with parliamentary procedure, but the agenda shouldn't be difficult. There's lots of other aspects that can be difficult. And uh, uh, so in whatever manner things are brought forward, if it shows up on the agenda that's circulated, then you decide whether you're adopting the agenda as circulated and once you do, you address each item on the agenda. And Deputy Mayor, everything you said is, could be quite right on the mark, but it gets addressed during the meeting on, as each item comes up on the agenda. So the response to any item might be, we, we dealt with this six months ago. And it might be that your CAO put it on the agenda and forgot you dealt with it six months ago. It could be any person who put it on the agenda. Um, and, uh, uh, but the proper process is to walk through your agenda item by item and deal with each item. 
once you've adopted it. As I said at the beginning, you put the agenda out, um, it's circulated, you take a motion to approve it, and if amendments are going to be made to that motion, it's like any other motion that's on the floor. You can amend the motion, and you can try to amend it as many different times as you want to try to amend it. That's parliamentary procedure. Okay? Um, the, uh, uh, but, but I do want to be clear, because I was a little afraid I was being misstated earlier. Um, there is no obligation to ask for items to be, if anybody has an item to be added to the agenda at the beginning of a meeting, especially a meeting like this where you don't want last minute things added to the agenda unless they're really important. And if they're so important, they probably didn't arise 30 seconds before the meeting, I'd suggest. The, uh, as a council, I think to Councillor Gerard's point, you want to send the message that you're not just going to add things willy-nilly because you don't have the time to add things willy-nilly and you want the background information. And if every councillor understands that, they're probably not going to bring things forward that require in-depth research without doing a request for decision and providing all the information or uh, asking for something to get, be put on the agenda so that they can perhaps ask whether staff can gather that information, right? And that the decision would be made in the future. Um, but the agenda sets the tone for the entire meeting. So it's important to, uh, uh, to be able to do that efficiently and, uh, and then move through it effectively for the rest of the evening. You might comment. Thank you, Solicitor. All right, moving on to uh, our recommendations arising from the CAC meeting on February 14th will be read and moved by Councillor Gerard. And you have, oh, uh, Deputy Mayor, did you have something? May I ask a question to the solicitor through the chair? Certainly. I'll put his back on. Uh, Councillor Gerard, you're muted again. Solicitor, my question would be this. If council is presented with an agenda, are we permitted to remove anything from that agenda as we are moving and adopting that agenda? Yes, so you put, but you put a motion on the floor, it's moved and seconded to adopt the agenda as it's been circulated and then you can remove items. Thank you. Now the floor is yours, Councillor Gerard. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, at the February 14th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director uh, Deb Kroll presented a request to extend the contract of the town's insurance provider, BFL Canada. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the extension of the town's relationship with BFL Canada for general insurance and risk management services for one year from April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023, and further that the town opt to maintain status quo coverage. I so move. Thank you, a seconder please. Second. Deputy Mayor, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that council approve the extension with BFL Canada for general insurance and risk management services for one year from April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023, and further that the town opt to maintain status quo coverage. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the extension with BFL Canada for general insurance and risk management services for one year from April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023, and further that the town opt to maintain status quo coverage. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Mm, withdrawal from capital reserves at the February 14th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Deb Kroll presented a request to withdraw funds from the town's capital reserves to support a number of items and activities. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the withdrawal of 217,356 uh, dollars and 57 cents from two town of Kenful capital reserves to partially fund the budgeted 2021-2022 
projects as detailed in the attached report. I so move. Thank you. Seconder, please. Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the withdrawal of $217,356.57 from two Town of Kentville capital reserves to partially fund the budgeted 2021-2022 projects as detailed in the report to Council. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the withdrawal of $217,356.57 from two Town of Kentville Capital Reserves to partially fund the budgeted 2021-2022 projects as detailed in the report to Council. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, tax exemption. At the February 14, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Deb Kroll uh, described the annual review of the limits set out in the low income tax exemption policy. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the low income tax exemption resolution for the year 2022 2023 as detailed in the attached report. I so move. And seconder. Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the low income tax exemption resolution for the 2022-2023 year as detailed in the report to Council. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the low income tax exemption resolution to the 2022-2023 year as detailed in the report to Council. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, regional sewer budgets. I will do these. We will accept these separately. Yes, please. Um, at the February 14th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, Director Bell described the activities and priorities for the Regional Sewer Committee and reviewed the operation budget and capital budgets for Council to review. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the Re, uh, King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 operating budget as presented at $1,642,600, of which $841,800 is assigned to the Town of Kentville building quarterly installments. I so move. Thank you. Second. Deputy Mayor, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 operating budget as presented at $1,642,600, of which $841,800 is the assigned to the Town of Kentville and billed in quarterly installments. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 operating budget as presented at $1,642,600, of which $841,800 is assigned to the Town of Kentville and billed in quarterly installments. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed, and that motion is carried. And Council Advisory Committee also recommends that Council approve the King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 capital budget as presented at $2,557,500. I so move. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 capital budget as presented at $2,557,500. Is there any discussion on this matter? There being no discussion, are you ready for the question? The question is on approval of the King's Regional Sewer 2022-2023 capital budget as presented at $2,557,500. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. 
And that motion is carried as well. Thank you. Tax, uh, taxi bylaw first reading. At the February 14th, 2022 meeting of the Council Advisory Committee, Mayor Snow reviewed the changes required in a taxi bylaw to remove minor typographical errors. Council Advisory Committee recommends that Council approve the proposed changes to fix the typographical errors and give first reading to the amended taxi bylaw. I so move. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Huntley, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the proposed changes to fix the typographical errors and give first reading to the amended taxi bylaw. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the proposed changes to fix the typographical errors and give first reading to the amended taxi bylaw. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you. Street naming at the February 14th, 2022 meeting of Council Advisory Committee, CAO Troke presented the proposed name for a new street near Me Road, Hebu Court, uh, Hebu's Court, sorry. Uh, Council discussed the proposal and asked the developer to consider Hebu Court or Hebu Court. Um, council Advisory Committee recommends that the Council approve the proposed street name. I so move. And a seconder? Councillor uh, York, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council approve the name of the new street as Ibu Court. So that's H-I-B-O-U, Court. Is there any discussion on this matter? Are you ready for the question? The question is on adoption of the motion to approve the name of the new street as Ibu Court. Voting is now open. Voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. Thank you. All right, we move on uh, to our councillor reports. And uh, Councillor Gerard, you've got the mic. Thank you, Worship. Um, so the only meeting that I had in the last 30 days or so is Valley Waste. Um, Valley Waste, and I believe uh, CAO Troke can confirm this, but I believe this was our last one as a cohesive group. Uh, the CAO group is, uh, is taking over. Um, it, it is uh, the pilot is contingent upon hiring of the executive and where that is underway that could be the case but there's a potential of it being delayed another month depending upon hiring process okay all right um, and the valley waste is still struggling to have a business plan um, they have never had a long-term capital equipment structure where uh, they set money aside because in two years we're going to need a loader or an offload truck or 20 years later, we're gonna need a new building. So they they are working on that, which I think is is good. It's sort of surprising they didn't have that in place over the last 23 years, but um, they did actually need a new loader, which is either here or, um, or is coming. Um, um, the other thing that I brought up uh, you'll all notice a while ago, we switched from part of Kenful is done on Monday, the other part was done on Tuesday, um, to all of Kenful is done on every other Wednesday now. So the reason, my understanding was, the reason they did this was so they could have exact tonnages on uh, different geographical spots. The town of Kenfield, Wolfville, Berwick, all stand alone and not have any. So. I am working on um, getting uh, some information from them so we know what our tonnage is going into it and that way when a budget comes to us with uh, uh, 
the roadside pickups included, we can look at that and go, that seems fair. Um, anyways, I haven't been able to get that yet, but uh, I'm working on it. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Huntley. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there was five committee meetings through the month of February. I attended the Source Water Protection and Kenful Water, uh, very informative. And uh, the engineer's report included financials and plan for drilling, talked about new well and discussion of plans for replacement of business park tank as it's nearing end of its life. The Kings Point to Point meeting, um, they have a strategic plan that's being drawn up with help from the Acadia Entrepreneurship. So that right now is on the table to make a list of what are the most important things moving forward. Valley Ranley is on an oversight committee. Uh, we talked about recruitment for the board. Uh, there was a chair report and there's a new chair. Um, and also we talked about the communication discussion and how to move forward that will improve um, the work of the Valley Ranch. Kings Point to Point, um, I re we reviewed the, the budget draft for 2022-23 and the CTAP report. And of course, as I talk about the next meeting that I went to as well, Kings Transit, in both those budgets, we're seeing uh, such a expenditure with uh, fuel and insurance. But there's those things we just can't control right now. Um, but anyway, they're just drafts and they're not finished yet. So uh, I'll update as it gets closer. The, one of the town events that I had just attended was a celebration of life for Lions President Mark Clark over at the Lions Hall, and it was a beautiful uh, turnout and how they did it. It was very respectful. And a few of the miscellaneous events that I attended, um, the municipalities and the platform for economy webinar. We had, uh, we talked about strategic plan and met with the CAO on some items and some of our discussions that I'm having with the CAO is about um, one of my mandates that I really wanna work on is housing and homelessness. So um, I'm trying to move forward with that. And um, designing retrofits and some of the meetings that I'm really interested in is about climate change and it's about retrofitting. So uh, there's a lot of ideas coming out of other cities and there's some pilot projects that uh, people can learn from. I attended the Diversity Kings County Talks African Heritage Month and great discussion there. Uh, the Zoom with Cody Blois, the budget discussion was actually canceled, but I have a meeting booked with him coming up uh, next week. And then I also met with uh, John Lohr's office and I had a great discussion with their office about the housing discussion and plans happening. So if I can keep that uh, discussion going, um, maybe um, I'll learn a lot about it, but uh, I think I can bring a lot to the table when I meet with the CAO and report to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Huntley. Councillor Maxwell. Mm, thank you. Um, January 24th, um, I attended the Inclusion and Access uh, Advisory Committee meeting. Um, we had uh, an outdoor learning series wa was discussed uh, for the group. Um, we noted that uh, 211 service needs to be pushed out to the public more. There's an awful lot of people that don't uh, understand what that service is about and what it's for. And it certainly would be useful for people with uh, disabilities and so on. But it's good for everybody. Presentations were given by Rachel and Dan on public transportation and the AT plan. Uh, some discussion occurred uh, on housing accessibility and a new website has been set up uh, for us called accessibility at kentville.ca uh, where links and other information will be shared uh, with the public and amongst the group. So that's that meeting. Uh, January 28th, uh, attended the police commission meeting. We looked at the makeup of the commission the open house has been postponed until COVID regulations are eased. Uh, David Walker was approved as a guest speaker and the chief took us through the budget and uh, that should be coming pretty soon. Uh, February 8th was another police commission meeting. Uh, this was a budget meeting where the commission discussed uh, specific aspects of the budget. Uh, February 11th, another inclusion and access advisory meeting. Um, a team has been set up at Town Hall and made up of senior staff to make sure inclusion and accessibility is first and foremost in their planning. The street naming committee is busy looking at uh, a policy. 
a report is forthcoming with that. The video to introduce our committee members is coming along nicely and should be out soon. We had a wonderful presentation by Mark Selvage. Uh, Mark told us his story about living with a brain injury and the challenges he faces maneuvering around our community. He has written a book called My Jelly Brain and has started a group called Helping Hands, which connects people with disabilities to various activities in the community. And uh, that helps them uh, get involved. It's a kind of a transportation, any, any kind of assistance they need. He stressed how important Uber can be for those with disabilities as well. Uh, Mark is also involved through the Wolf Alliance Club, raising funds to provide a motorized car for, for kids with disabilities. And to contribute, uh, you would get in touch with uh, a Wolf Alliance Club member. Some town and Kentville events. Um, I've been attending the, uh, in January, I, I attended the Kentville Ravine HWA committee. Um, I've been attending this because I'm very interested in what's going on at the Ravine, of course. And this is with the... Uh, the woolly algid and uh, the hemlock, hemlock trees. The information presented at this, these meetings is fantastic. At this meeting, we got an update on the tree count in the ravine. More is yet to be done, but preliminary numbers are impressive. We looked at preliminary costs for injecting the trees against HWA and the successful fundraising that took place at Sporting Lake when they were looking at, uh, at theirs, um, their hemlocks. There are many volunteers around the province that will help with this work, and the group is recommending proceeding. Um, then on February 9th, we had a, they had another meeting. The lead team presented a draft document looking at a proposal for action against the hemlock woolly algid. The group discussed each aspect of this document. HWA has not been detected in the ravine yet, but it has been detected 1.5 kilometers outside, so it's making its way there. Decline of the trees does not happen quickly, so the group feels there is time for public education, which is very important um, to the group that that takes place. There is no natural predator right now against HWA. And with the recent developments at the ravine with uh, a lot of damage uh, done there, I'm sure that uh, that will become a number one priority with, uh, with uh, the group and so on. Um, miscellaneous events, I attended the winter fun event at Oak Dean Park, um, a cooperative event with uh, Kempel Recreation and the County of Kings, I believe. Uh, this event uh, was very well attended, uh, although there was a wee bit of snow that didn't stop a variety of event events from taking place. Some events included archery, colorful snowball making, frisbee target throwing, tether ball, snowshoeing, and many others. Um, a lot of families there with, uh, with children. Um, the various park equipment was uh, being well used and hot chocolate was flying off the table. A special highlight was viewing the adaptive uh, cross-country ski equipment set up for use and residents are reminded they can sign out equipment at the recreation department. On February 21st, um, which was Heritage Day in Nova Scotia, I attended the Kentville Heritage Centre um, event and uh, it was a perfect time to, to go and view the displays. The highlight was the Mayor John King display. Mayor King was the first mayor of Kentville and there was lots of information on him uh, as the, uh, the group has received um, an immense amount of, of information passed along from the family. As well, it was interesting to see the minutes book um, written in hand in perfect penmanship that today is rare and so at times it was very difficult to read because it was uh, so neatly done in a scroll that we're not used to seeing. Um, it was amazing to see the detail uh, that went into those minutes um, and done by hand. Um, I highly recommend a visit if you have not been in recently. And that is my report. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. Uh, January 27th was regional sewer and uh, essentially we did an operations and compliance update. Uh, total suspended solids were a bit high this month mainly due to 
the lagoons being frozen over and our BODs were slightly over as a function of the weather. We went through operating capital budget discussions. Again, we had another regional sewer committee meeting on February the 7th where we discussed changes around the operating budget for the purpose of presenting to our various respective councils. We discussed um, TSS not necessarily being included in the current formula with a view to do so in the future. That is left with the technical committee to um, continue on throughout the year. February 9th was investment advisory committee and the market update from our IA at that time was 14.7 million. We had an update on, at our meeting on a PIMCO monthly income fund. One of the funds that we're looking into to invest once the IPS, the investment policy statement is approved and signed off by the minister, and now it is. So that was about a year in the making, uh, but the IPS is now approved and signed off, so we are ready to go, and our investment advisor has gone forward and invested in a couple of different funds. So uh, that's a pretty exciting, it's pretty exciting news. February 19th, 19th was KBC, Kentville Business Community. There were various reports from the treasurer, et cetera. Um, one of the main points from the executive director um, was the ACOA funding uh, it, that's now in place for a comfort station and public washrooms to the tune of 20,000. KBC is going to, pre to present to council on same um, to potentially uh, have that form part of our operating budget. Uh, more to come on that, but I just wanted to bring Council up to date that that's one of the items that KBC will be bringing forward. Uh, there were some new board members at the meeting, which was nice to, nice to see, and we had some economic stat updates on the population, and Kenfels is up 5.7% with the new census. February the 11th and January the 24th, I attended the Kentville Inclusion, Inclusion and Access Advisory Committee, and Councillor Maxwell has uh, done fulsome um, updates on both of those committees, so I won't go into those other, other than to mention about the presentation from Mark uh, Selvage and uh, the author of My Jelly Brain, and it is available at Chisholm's for those who have not read it. I have a copy if you'd like to borrow it. It's a great book, um, and uh, Mark has a brain injury, and he shared his experiences in life as a, a person with accessibility issues. Uh, February the 4th, had some discussions with Councillor York and Huntley regarding a noise bylaw. Just was just general discussion, uh, various meanings of what, what, uh, what the bylaw means, items in within that bylaw. February the 7th, I attended the Rotary Club of Kempfel meeting. It was a presentation from Brittany Mastroni, the Manager of Community Development and Accessibility and, accessibility and Diversion and Inclusion. She talked about um, the plan that Kings County has. February the 7th, I attended the same memorial of a longstanding community member, Mark uh, Clark, where um, Councillor Huntley had mentioned that, uh, uh, that already. And uh, on the 21st, it would have been, uh, I attended the Kentville Heritage Centre, and it's really lovely to see the, the history that's there, and I would encourage anybody who has not visited um, uh, the centre to go and, uh, and visit it. It's wonderful. Thank you. That is my report. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor York. Thank you. Um, very similar to everybody else, I attended uh, Source Water Protection and Police Commission. Uh, Councillor Maxwell spoke to that and uh, Councillor Huntley spoke to that as well. Um, I've attended a couple of AVRL or Annapolis Valley Regional Library meetings. Um, end of year, budget year means that we're also going through the budget at this point, so it's been a lot of budget discussions and planning for upcoming years. Um, I've also attended the KCAPT monthly meetings um, and a lot of discussion around what's going to be happening at the school once the restrictions are lifted and what that may or may not look like. Um, I had a regional recreation facility meeting this morning, however it was cancelled about 20 minutes before the meeting, so unfortunately there's no update there, but it should be um, rescheduled promptly. Um, I had the opportunity to attend some of the Fire and Ice Festival um, teaser bits that were happening around town. I'm really looking forward to what that committee can do now that restrictions um, essentially leave them limitless with their creativity and opportunities. So I'm um, really looking forward to that. I, like many around the table, attended the historical, or sorry, the Kentville Historic Society Heritage Day. Um, it was a bit of a trip as I got to go back and look at um, some do documents rather with um, Mrs. Brown, my elementary school uh, librarian. So she filled me in on a lot of fun details about who used to live in my home and what they did for a living. It was really neat to look through those documents. So if I would encourage everybody to do that um, and take a look through some of the, the documents and see if you can find your home in there and see 
who lived there before you did. It's really interesting. Um, I've had a lot of meetings and phone calls and emails with uh, citizens this month. Um, I want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for reaching out when you do. Um, it's great to engage in conversation and um, though oftentimes we come to very different conclusions, we've had really great conversations and I, I feel uh, very strongly that having conversations with people that you may disagree with um, is is helpful for everybody to more fully develop their um, their opinion and their their stance on things. So I really do thank everybody who's reached out. Um, it's been um, wonderful engaging with you all. Um, that is my report. Not to be redundant with everybody else's committee updates. So excellent, short and sweet. Thank you very much, Councillor York. Councillor Sapien. Thank you, Mayor Snow. Um, on the seventeenth of February, we met with uh, Diversity Kings, and uh, if. Some of you haven't um, or haven't been made aware, but I'm sure most of you are that for the month of February, they uh, spent the whole month highlighting African Heritage Month. So due to the restrictions, a lot of these presentations were done virtually, but um, they did a really good job with that. Um, there was no joint fire um, meeting um, as it's quarterly, but I have had a few citizens ask. Uh, we did replace one of our engines. And uh, in case you're wondering, I, was, I found this out the other day, a customer was uh, in my place of business and our old engine has gone to Plimpton and Gilbert's Cove and they're head over heels because it's one of the newest truck engines that they've ever had in their history. So they found a good home. On the 2nd of February, there was a Kenful Water Commission meeting. Um, I didn't find out about this meeting until the 17th. So I had just by accident, one of the members reached out and wanted to know why I wasn't there. I then reached out to the chair, who's Mayor Snow, and she told me that um, there was a clerical error and that I was not notified at her request. So I'm not sure what that means exactly, but I hope to go to the next one. And the other thing I'll highlight on is that on February 21st, uh, I also attended the Kenful Historical Society's Open House Day. And as uh, Deputy Mayor and uh, Councillor Maxwell said, it was great. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit as I do each time. And I gotta say, these volunteers deserve a shout out because they just, they're just they a hard working group of people and uh, they remind us of our roots in Kenful. So every time I go there, I see something I didn't see the last time and uh, I'm very thankful to them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, would uh, you please uh, take the chair? And the time is uh, 7.17. Mayor Snow, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Rather than present my report this evening, I will make a statement to the citizens of Kenville. Originally, this statement was planned for September and October of 2021. However, it was requested that I delay to engage in training and potential mediation. As evidenced by the ongoing social media posts and emails against this council, it seems that the delay has in fact given more fuel to the fire. I will address the concerns raised in this chamber over the events of July, August, and September of 2020. The decisions taken that summer were decisions of council, whether or not we all agreed with the decisions. It was and continues to be our sworn duty to uphold those decisions. The council of the day may not have done all the right things, but we did do the right things with the guidance of our solicitors. We would not have been in this position if a member of our council had not chosen to leave a closed session on July 27th and discuss the decisions with staff. This action precipitated a whole host of events, including the 11th hour letter detailing the unsubstantiated allegations. This was not the councillor's first or last transgression of the sanctity of a closed session. The council quickly moved to hire an interim CAO whose primary task was to ensure the health and welfare of staff and further to ensure that the town of Kentville workplace was safe. We tasked our solicitor with hiring an HR firm to conduct a full investigation and review the allegations. 
the Town of Kentville's HR lawyer was engaged to negotiate a settlement with the departing member of staff. The subsequent settlement and all related correspondence was sealed under a non-disclosure agreement initiated by the former staff member, not the council. The former council and members of Town Hall staff were required to sign the agreement. However, the letter was shared without discretion for its ongoing harm. The efforts to peddle this letter to of unknown origins or provenance across the province through Facebook, Frank Magazine, Saltwire Network, and CBC have made a mockery of due process, all the while purporting to have the best interest of staff in place. This matter has been resolved. A full investigation of the allegations was conducted. The town was provided with a legal opinion. Legal fees were reported and the severance package was consistent with the labour market. This is a closed matter and further inquiries and correspondence will be forwarded directly to our solicitor. A member of this council, with respect, without respect, the legal framework or oath we took as elected officials has created and continues to per perpetuate a false nar narrative. He has called council corrupt and wasteful of revenue. The facts and audited financial statements do not support his claim and it should be noted that he is a member of the audit committee and he voted to recommend those statements to council and subsequently voted to adopt the statements by council. The audited statements are currently available for all to review and question on the Town of Kentville website. His social media posts have incited a stream of hate towards members of this council in so much as members have been verbally assaulted while out with their family and received hateful voicemail and social media messaging. His ongoing actions and behaviors are attempt to coerce our decisions, our decision making and votes through verbal and email threats, slanderous statements and going so far as to seek his res retribution through calls for dismissal of members from their employment and nuisance lawsuits. The buyback decision of the former Robinson property has exacerbated this action towards this council and is unwarranted as the developer failed to meet any and all of the contractual milestones in the sales agreement. The council has been more than patient and accommodating despite the declared and continued conflict of interest in this matter. His actions and behaviors in this chamber have been disgraceful, unprofessional and childish. His lack of adherence to the rules of order has created a maelstrom for each council meeting and has warranted the necessary and consulted changes to procedure. He has further breached the sanctity of this chamber using it as a platform for his video series criticizing and demeaning council for its democratic and legal actions. Members of this council have collaborated to pursue my removal from office through any means. However, I will state for the record I am the mayor of Kentville and I will not resign my position. My record speaks for itself. I have been your faithful servant. I have not deviated from my commitment to you or to transparency of business of this council. However, personal, legal and land matters are provided a degree of confidentiality and in those matters, I will defer to the legal framework and not curiosity. I have a sworn duty to uphold the laws of this country and further the legal framework as an elected municipal official in Nova Scotia. I hold that duty with honour and integrity. I have committed to you, the citizens of Kentville, annually since October of 2016 to carry out my duties faithfully and fulfil the responsibilities of my office. I am bound by rules to uphold the decisions of Council whether I support them or not. As once the motion is on the floor, it becomes the work of council and the outcome or decision becomes all of ours. I hold with integrity and knowledge of right that what we have discussed in a closed session was within the legal for framework afforded by the MGA and that the discussion is confidential and not for public distribution. The town of Kentville is one of the most progressive towns in Nova Scotia. We have two major plans in place with both federal and provincial funding. We are on the cusp of opening up a corridor of opportunity with more shared funding. We have seen growth in population and prosperity. Our downtown is vibrant and a destination for all. 
developers are buying and building with confidence. There's more to do and the noise and rhetoric perpetuated by a member of this council and his accomplice are taking away from the good work we should be doing. As the legislated spokesperson for this council, I recommit our efforts to work for Kentville towards a better future for all of our citizens away from and despite the fury of social media. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Could I have a motion to accept the councillor and mayor's reports as presented? Second, a Councillor Gerard. Second, Councillor Huntley. All in favor? Contrary minded? Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is uh, new business. And the first item of new business, uh, 7A, is Code of Conduct, Water Commission. Your Worship, you have the floor. Uh, just a minute. I'll press my buzzer here. Uh, just one moment, Councillor Maxwell. Oh, sorry, she was, yeah, sorry. Okay, thank you, Councillor Maxwell. Yes, again, I would like to uh, make a motion that perhaps we will uh, table these until the process uh, outlined in the code of conduct is followed and uh, I I can read through what I had before um, I no, think that that's okay Councillor Maxwell just you just you want those you want them tabled I want them tabled until the process is followed okay do I have a seconder on that I don't know who put their hand up first. I'll go. I'll go with you, Councillor. Yeah. Councillor York. Sorry. Um, discussion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go you, ahead. You've still got me here. Um, I think that the the process is very clear, and uh, although it does take a bit of reading, um, in order to get it all in order. Um, first of all, we get uh, a few uh, sections in the Code of Conduct that point out what we're allowed to do. So the 3, 4.1, 3.2, the mayor or deputy mayor points out the infraction of the code to the offending member. Uh, obviously, that would be the first step that that would take place. Um, if the offenses continue, uh, the mayor or deputy mayor should discuss the issues in private with the offending council member. And then in 4.13.3, it is the responsibility of the mayor or deputy mayor to initiate uh, the actions. Now, the actions would be described in 4.15.1. If under 4.13.3, if the mayor or deputy mayor takes no action, uh, the alleged violations can be brought, brought up in full council meeting. Um, we had that happen in my first term, um, where deputy mayor made um, a statement uh, concerning a councillor that uh, she felt was in violation. Um, I do not believe this means that uh, they ignore the above process and go straight to uh, to this to that step um, We have to consider if the allegations are false What if the allegations are false the last thing we should be doing is discussing them in an open session? I believe if council feels the, the mayor is not acting or the deputy mayor the allegations can be brought by council to open session um, so 4.15.1 says any Reported violations will be subject to investigation by the mayor and council if the council has witnessed the allegations. So if the council has read, has seen, has witnessed those allegations, then the council is involved. If the investigation finds the member breached the code, council may impose corrective action. If the allegations are not viewed, read, or witnessed by council, uh, the mayor then would approach the CAO or solicitor um, and they would do an investigation. In these reports, 
that have been submitted, all the items have been witnessed by council. It is the mayor's or deputy mayor's responsibility to carry out the sanctions determined by the council, or in other words, the investigating team. That seems to be a pretty succinct process, and it seems to be pretty fair because it comes down to councillors doing the investigation. And, uh, and so my asking to have these um, tabled until such time that this process is followed, um, I don't think is, a reason, is unreasonable. I believe it's following our code of conduct. Um, I would like to make one, uh, a couple other notes here that this code has not been updated since October 30th in 2017. However, in my first term, um, we discussed this code many times. Council was asked to take the code and make changes, um, in other words, your red lines. I passed mine in on December 11th in 2019, and we were to review it in January of 2020. There was no follow-up done at all. Two councillors requested a review of the Code of Conduct on our arrival in October 21st. And again, there has been no follow-up. And so I believe that uh, this outlines pretty well um, the process that should be followed and jumping right to putting them uh, up for discussion in uh, in an open public session um, is not fair to the parties involved. And uh, I think both parties should have the ability to speak to the allegations. So, thank you. Councillor Maxwell, Councillor Maxwell, when you say both parties should be able to speak to the, um, the respective breaches, do you mean within council, in, in, in public, or do you mean once the investigations are done by, in this case, it would be the deputy mayor and the CAO and potentially the solicitor. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Councillor Maxwell, please. Yeah, I, I would think that this would be dealt with like an HR issue and uh, there would be a meeting uh, of council, closed meeting of council, and both parties um, should be able to present evidence um, at that meeting along with whatever documentation that is available and then council would consider um, what they've heard and what they've read and then that decision would be made by council. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Maxwell. I will go next with Councillor York. Please thank go you, ahead. Madam Chair. Um, as one of the councillors that um, Councillor Maxwell alluded to having placed the code of conduct as a priority for this council um, back in October or November rather of 2020. I'm inclined to agree. I think um, given the present climate of uh, social media and um, just the climate of uh, mass scrutiny, I suppose, that there is, um, that it does warrant the option or the opportunity rather for people to um, remain innocent until proven guilty, if that's uh, too legal a phrase, I'm, I apologize. But there is, um, there is a process that should be followed, and if the process allows for an investigation and it allows for uh, the opportunity for counsel to review the information without it being in such a pu public platform first, then I would, I would be inclined to take that position. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gerard. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, through the Chair, I will direct this to the solicitor. Uh, when we went through this uh, previously, in the previous four years, um, it is my understanding, and if I'm wrong, please uh, let me know, but discussions around council conduct um, are part of the public process. Thank you, Councillor Gerard. And, uh Count, uh, Solicitor Matar, go ahead, please. So I was headed up here before Councillor Gerard wanted to pose a question Why? to him. So I'm, so I'm going to answer his question by um, uh, perhaps expanding a little beyond what that question was. Um, the short answer to his question is yes, but it depends. Um, Councillor Maxwell described one process 
and then went on to talk about it coming back to council. Your code, the reason, or one of the reasons at least, that your code of conduct's been on the um, uh, air quotes around the word agenda, sorry for using that word again, um, for a while is because the process is not clear. So let's just be clear about that. Mm. It is not clear. Mm -hmm. There is a process where the mayor can investigate and deal with things, and there is a process where it can come to council and council can deal with things. Mm -hmm. the, there is a process where if the mayor uh, initially deals with it and perhaps people aren't happy or it seems to be incomplete that it could find its way to council, but it, uh, those three processes aren't that clear and do not appear really as separate processes. They seem to get mixed up, and and I think that comes through perhaps, um, and my apologies, Councillor Maxwell, if I'm misquoting you, but I think it perhaps comes through in what she had said, because I thought initially the motion was clear, that this was table it, send it back, have the deputy mayor deal with it as if it was the mayor, <coughs> period. Mm -hmm. But then it was mentioned perhaps coming back to council, and that is a different process. Mm -hmm. So if the deputy mayor is going to deal with it, deputy mayor may choose to bring it back to council, or the deputy mayor may choose to deal with it and consider it done. And so as part of this decision that council makes here tonight, I encourage you to be clear as to the process that you want followed. Don't rely on this policy. It's terrible. Okay, I've said this in the past. I'll continue to say it until it's replaced. Don't redline what you've got. I've also said that before. Let's have a meeting and talk about what you want. What you've got is garbage. Okay, so decide tonight the process that you want to follow. If you want to put it in the hands of the deputy mayor, put it in her hands. Leave it up to her to decide whether she's going to uh, impose some sort of discipline or whatever it's going to be or find that things are overblown, put it in her hands. Perhaps also give her the authority to bring it back to council if she chooses. If you want her to investigate and then report to you and put it in your hands to deal with it, then make that clear as well, okay? So that she knows what it is she, uh, you expect of her. Thank you. Is there any further discussion, discussion around the motion from Councillor Maxwell? Yes. yes? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Maxwell. Solicitor, going through the, the policy that we have, although you may not like it, um, there's only one process here in this policy. Um, perhaps maybe Council has treated this differently in past years, but there is only one process that's outlined here. And, uh, and I think to leave it to one person um, to make a judgment on somebody else, um, I think is, um, you know, leaves too much room for um, bias. And, uh, and I don't think that it should be left to one person. And so I think that the code is pretty good. And from what I saw coming out of NSFM, it's pretty much the same code of conduct as what we have in front of us. So I don't know what was done previously at the town of Kentville, but I've studied this code inside out and backwards um, and this is the process, what I've read here, is the process that's outlined in this code of, code of conduct. Um, and so I just, I mean, I gather you don't like it and, that, and that's fine, but I think it is a very fair and, uh, and unbiased approach and leaving uh, decisions to one person uh, I believe opens up for bias. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maxwell. Go ahead, solicitor. 
Yes, all I'm doing is attempting to encourage the councillor, it's her motion, to clarify the, the process she wants to have followed. Mm. She doesn't like my opinion this time, she didn't like it last time in her last term, and um, one of us is the lawyer. Uh, so I've given my legal opinion about what this says about process, mm -hmm. and she knows this time as well as last time that my opinion is it's not as she reads it. Um, so thus the solution is to simply make it clear in her motion what she wants the process to be this time so that council can vote on that and you know what it is because then it's irrelevant what the policy says or doesn't say. So, um, so solicitor, it, oh, okay, sorry, I didn't know where you went. Sorry, the that's podium okay. is falling apart. That's okay, sorry, let me get that fixed. Um, so with respect to Councillor Maxwell's motion to, to table uh, the items on the agenda, you're looking for her to... It, ha it has to be more than that because when you table a motion, you, have to, you want to say when it's coming back. Exactly. And so, and so and, she and did say that. She said it's coming back after the process is followed. So Be, the, be explicit so, around what so, process. So we need to know what the process is that's going to be followed. And it sounds, if I can put words in her mouth, it sounds like she's asking the deputy mayor to do an investigation and report back to council. That, and she's, she's shaking, shaking her head, her head no. no. So she's gonna have to clarify that. Okay. And the report will be in open council. N not in a closed session, correct? Correct. At this point, it will be in, it'll be in an open session, but I guess we have to, uh, you'll have to ask her what, she, what her intent is. Okay, thank you. Councillor Maxwell, uh, before I turn your light back on, do you wish to uh, amend your motion or expand upon your motion in terms of the process that you wish to see followed? There you go, thank you. Sure, um, so what I would like to see followed is that the, in, the reported violations um, be investigated by the deputy mayor, mayor or mayor depending on what, you know, who's involved, and the council, that the council is involved, if council has witnessed the allegations, which they have, and so that the investigation takes place by the mayor and the council, or the deputy mayor. Um, if the investigation finds the member has breached the code, that council will impose the corrective action. And uh, that once those that corrective action or actions have been identified, then the deputy mayor or mayor will make sure that those uh, sanctions are um, carried out. So I, I guess the the only part about the motion, Councillor Maxwell, would be I I don't believe in this in this in either case that the mayor can be involved in the investigation of of the such breaches um, because two of them are from her against Councillor Zabian and two are from Councillor Zabian <clears throat> against Mayor Snow. Mm -hmm. So, I so would, it would be it the deputy mayor. Would be the deputy mayor. Yeah. Did you get all that? I did. Yes. <laughs> would you? <laughs> okay. Would you like to read back yes. the motion and then uh, and then maybe we'll get the same seconder. So what I heard was a motion to table the two reports. Is, did you want that section kept, Councillor Maxwell? Yeah. Okay. Motion oh, to four reports. Four reports. Four reports, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. One, two, three, and four. Motion to table the four reports until reported violations are investigated by the Deputy Mayor and Council, and by Council. And further, if the investigation finds that the member has breached the code, that Council, that council will apply corrective action. And um, further, uh, excuse me. Yes, council will Im impose or determine the corrective action. Determine and impose corrective action. So, Councilor Maxwell, you're you're asking for the the such breaches to be investigated by the deputy mayor and council and council. Yes. There's one more section. Yes. Go ahead. And further, if sanctions are applied, the deputy mayor will ensure that they are carried out. That's right. 
I can put this up on the board if you like. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have a motion. I'll, I'll ask for a seconder. Um, I'm, I will need some clarity around how the breaches are investigated as a collective unit. Do you want me to explain that to you now? You would take in the documentation that has been provided mm -hmm. and we would give both parties an opportunity to speak um, to those documents that they have provided. And council would, and deputy mayor would listen to those. Which is essentially what we would have done tonight, correct? We're just delaying it. If, I, if I'm... I'm not entirely sure that's what we would have done tonight. So that's why I'm formalizing it here. Okay. Do you have a comment, solicitor? I get the sense you're fishing. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The... Uh, uh, so I'm not, uh, I think we're simply tabling it to a certain date for this action to happen on that date. I think that's the request. Th that's Is that's how I'm understanding it, yeah. Councillor Maxwell? Um, Solicitor, I would, I would wonder if it is appropriate to do an investigation in the public eye. I understand that the public um, needs to know certainly the outcome but the actual investigation, um, I don't think uh, should be done in public. If you could tell me some other institution that does those HR investigations um, in the public, um, I would be interested in hearing that. But I'm not aware of any HR type of investigation that is done in the public. Certainly um, the outcomes would would be public but um i would question whether or not it's necessary for the entire process to be done in the public thank you councillor maxwell go ahead solicitor and then i'll, I'll go to councillor zavian there's, there's a basic misunderstanding here this isn't hr this is a complaint about the actions of a councillor and a mayor in their public role in their public role acting in their role as councillor and mayor. And as the councillor Maxwell has said, other councillors, I presume the public perhaps, have seen these events. These are not things that are HR matters. And, uh, and so they do come to council, like they're here tonight. The complaints are public. They're part of the agenda and uh, uh, there appears to be absolutely nothing about these complaints that's private, confidential, uh, and, uh, and need not be shared in a public forum. And I understand um, that some may feel that it's more comfortable to have these conversations behind closed doors, but that's not what you're elected for. It's not about comfort. It's not about your comfort or their comfort. These are allegations about what they have done as public figures. And, it, and if council is good to deal with it, in my opinion, it does so in the open. If you have the deputy mayor deal with it, then it's not done with, dealt with in the, in the public. She may report back to you, but uh, I think those are your two choices. Thank you, Solicitor. Um, I'm going to. I have oh, I, I Councillor Maxwell, I'm, I'll come back to you. I have to, I have uh, Councillor Zavian ahead of you, okay. but I'm I'm being cognizant of the fact that we do have a motion on the table. Um, I was asking for clarification around it midstream. It's not seconded, so I'm not in keeping with Robert's rules right now. Is everybody? Is everybody okay continuing the discussion or do you want the motion seconded? I'll second it. Okay, so let's do that. Thank you, Councillor Zabian. And let's uh, go to you for discussion. You're on. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I've been listening for the last, I don't know, 20 minutes about this and even a year and a half into it. And um, 
I'm not comfortable with, with one person looking at this and doing an investigation. I don't think that's the route to go. I think Councillor Maxwell made a valid point there. Um, I just want this group to work as a team. And if that means we need someone to come in, I mean, a third party perhaps. I, don't, I, I know that's been done before in the past and it, from what I had heard, I don't know the details. It wasn't very successful. Um, I mean, I'm pleading with everybody tonight as a group here. We have to come together for this town. This animosity has to end and I just want to make it clear. Um, and I know this might not be the time, but I, all I have done is tell the truth. Maybe you don't like the venue that I used, but everything I said has been honest and transparent and it's verbatim. And maybe, like I said, maybe you don't like social media. Well, I'm sorry. When I'm shunned in here and I'm not able to talk, that's where I have to go. So I'm not gonna apologize for being honest. I'm gonna plead with all of you in here that we have to put Kenville first because this is getting ridiculous from, from the beginning. And people don't see a lot of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So you, don't, you only see this part. And sometimes you see the ugly parts of us, all of us, not just me, all of us in this room. And sometimes it comes from somewhere else. And you are correct, Solicitor Matard said, the agenda sets the tone, but also the mood when you walk in here sets the tone. And I don't know about the rest of you, when I walk in this room, yeah, I'm anxious until I sit down because you never know how you're gonna be received if you're gonna be respected or, or thrown under the bus. And I think that's, been evident, I know in my time here. So instead of going back and forth on the process here, let's just make a, a path somehow to work as a team and get back on track because it's evident, and I'm gonna make this clear too, it is evident that there is personal vendetta here. And maybe I'll take my share of it because of the way I've been treated, but you all have to take your share. You just can't pin it on me because I was honest with the public and you wanna say, you know what? Councillor Zabian's out of order, he's out of line, he's this and this. But at the end of the day, all I did was speak the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zabian. Councillor uh, Maxwell. Uh, thank you. I, I have no problem with um, running an investigation uh, in the public. However, the town of Wolfville Council um, had a code of conduct breach and uh, it was discussed behind closed doors and, and only the result was brought forward. The city of Halifax had code of conduct breach all in my first term. It was discussed behind closed doors and only the results were brought forward. So we can, you know, we can stick to our legal opinion or I think we can say this is the way we want to do it. Um, because there are examples out there of municipalities that don't air their dirty laundry in the public. And if, if that's what this council wants to do, I have no problem doing it. I can do the tough and the dirty. But I don't think that it's necessary for us to do that. The public knows the breaches are here. They know what they are. And I don't think that we need to have an investigation done in front of the cameras. I do agree that that investigation should be, the results of that investigation should be made public. Um, so that's, that's where I'm at. And uh, you know, that's fine if council wants to do, if somebody wants to do another, another motion, um, you can. I'll just go with mine. If you wanna have it in the, in, air the dirty laundry in the public, that's fine with me. So. Okay, thank you, Councillor Maxwell. I'm gonna go to you, solicitor, and then Councillor Jord, I have you. Just wanted to make it clear that every situation can be unique and to try to draw parallels between what's in front of council and what other councils may or may not have done, um, quite frankly, is irrelevant. Um, but let's also be clear, there is no investigation here. You have the information, mm -hmm. you saw the information, you're not investigating what occurred you're going to evaluate the information and decide what to do about it. 
This is an investigation. It's not like other situations where somebody has to go do an investigation, and you don't do an investigation <coughs> as a group, right? The, that would be an inquisition, perhaps, but you're not a, a board of in, inquisitors. You're not doing an investigation. That's not what's being suggested, even though it's been referenced in those frame, in that framework. So I just want to be clear. There is no investigation here. This is an evaluation of the information presented to you for you to make a decision if indeed it's you as counsel. I just wanted, I made a note to myself, we have to be clear in this resolution uh, when it's coming back to counsel. Thank you, Solicitor. Councilor Gerard. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I just want to say we've spent the last five meetings talking about following policy. Um, and I don't quite understand why Councillor Maxwell wants to follow her own agenda. And I, I, th I think if we're going to do this, we follow the policy. We've, we've got a policy right here. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Gerard. So we have a motion on the table. We have a seconder. Is there any further discussion? If there is further discussion, go ahead. And if there is further discussion, but so then we'll, I'll have you read that, Jennifer, afterwards. Councillor York. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we heard from the solicitor that in the uh, motion, it needs to have a clear timeline on when it's coming back to council. Mm -hmm. I would make a suggestion that it be a special council meeting. I think it should be perhaps the only thing on the agenda, so it's not um, at the end when tensions may or may not be elevated, um, and so that it can get the attention it's deserved without having to uh, worry about timelines and um, keeping in mind that uh, the public, if they, if we're doing this publicly, um, that um, they are deserving of um, a concise and clear meeting and perhaps having it be the only thing on the agenda would they make that more accessible. Okay, thank you, Councillor York. Uh, Councillor Maxwell, I'm going to you next. So you have the floor, but are you in any way amiable to that? I'm going to speak to, um, to Councillor York and, and the solicitor. Through the chair, uh, if you could. Through the chair, um, of course. I would uh, like to suggest the council meeting in April. Um, Do you mean a special this, council? This would come back, yep. A, a special council meeting? Well, I guess that's the way we're doing it. Yep. The end of April. Okay, any further discussion? And then I will have Jennifer read the motion because it has changed. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh, I have Councillor Zabian that's there. Go Thank ahead. you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I guess through the chair to Councillor Maxwell and perhaps to all of you, um, is it germane to the, the four issues on the agenda now or should we open this up to a I guess to really go through all the breaches that any of us feel may have been, been uh, have, have occurred in the last year and a half. Perhaps it is time that um, there is a very candid conversation around how this council has been, been acting and, and how it's being run and perhaps that will be our saving grace. So thank you. I, I think, uh, um to your question, Councillor Zabian, it would just be germane to the four uh, breaches that have been presented before Council at this juncture. Thank you. Councillor Huntley. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted clarification. Um, would this be a special meeting or would it be for the Council meeting at the end of April? Uh, Councillor Maxwell, I believe, was fine with either, whether it was at a council meeting or if it was a special council. So, Councillor Maxwell? Um, I had agreed with uh, Councillor York uh, for a special council meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Does that answer you? Okay, great, thank you. Councillor Maxwell, solicitor? I think you need to pick a date 
so it's been suggested end of April, but they, and, and you could do that the next step or you could leave it to the CAO to find a date, but let's be clear about how a date's going to be established so everybody knows when it's coming back. Okay. Um, Councillor Maxwell, since you made the motion, would you be comfortable with the CAO choosing the date? Yes. Okay, thank you. Jennifer. That council table the four reports until reported violations are investigated by the deputy mayor and by council at a special council meeting with the CAO choosing a date in April. And further, if the investigation finds that the member has breached the code, that a member has breached the code, that council will determine and impose corrective action. And further, if sanction, sanctions are applied, the deputy mayor will ensure that they are carried out. And I would recommend um, with the CAO choosing a date in April, that works for everybody. Okay. Uh, does that, okay. that works for everybody? Is that satisfactory, the motion? Yes. Do you need to have it up on, it will be up on the screen anyway? No. Nope. No, I it will not. There. No, that's okay, I think we're okay. It's pretty long, I'll put it there. Okay, great. Mr. Zabian, sorry, Councillor Zabian, are you comfortable seconding that? Yes. Okay, great. Any further discussion? Oh, Councillor York. Just so that we're clear that investigated as to um, what the solicitor had, um, had uh, clarified is that it's merely a review of the information that we have all publicly seen and witnessed and have access to now. That's what yeah. the word investigation means to me. Yeah, I mean, as I, as I see it, it it's we, we, we will be discussing it as we would have discussed it at this evening's okay. meeting. Um, but we will just be discussing it and, and um, um, evaluating it, to use the solicitor's words, and uh, deciding uh, collectively uh, as a council what sanctions to impose, if, if any, or what corrective action to take. And that it's not an inquisition, correct? But an Correct. investigation. Okay. Yep, an evaluation of the information. Thank you. Yep. And uh, Mayor Snow and Councillor Zabian could speak to the respective breaches only, but would not be in, 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 involved in the decision making around any and all sanctions. No Correct. Okay, so I think we're. Oh, Councillor Gerard. In, yep. in, in that, that Councillor Zabian and, and Mr. Snow could speak, are they there for the entire the entirety of the meeting? Do they do they speak at the beginning uh, about their own position and then the rest of us deliberate or Okay. Solicitor? They will be present, they'll get to debate, they don't get to vote on uh, things that impact them. Okay? okay. They get to vote on things that don't impact them they don't get to vote on things that impact them, but they get to present their position and participate in the debate. Thank you. Okay, I think, uh, are we ready, ready for the question to be called? now open. And voting is now closed. And the motion is carried. And I will ask Mayor Snow to please take back the chair.
All right, moving on to our next agenda item. Uh, we have uh, no correspondence uh, this evening. And our next agenda item is uh, public uh, comments. And uh, you may step to the, the podium and please state your name and address uh, for the record and you will be provided with no more than five minutes to speak. Thank you. I'm only going to take five seconds. My name is Joey Murphy, uh, sitting here listening tonight. And if this special council meeting for the Code of Conduct is going to occur, I recommend the public forum happen after. I do not think it is a good idea for this public forum that is going to happen to happen before this council meeting, or else Kangaroo Court might follow. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, our next uh, agenda item. We have um, business which uh, must be a legal matter which must be conducted in a closed session and we require a motion to go into the closed session to discuss the agenda item. We will not be returning to Facebook Live for completion of the meeting or adjournment. Uh, so the motion is to move into a closed session to discuss the agenda item. Thank you, and seconder. Uh, Councillor Gerard, thank you. It has been moved and seconded that Council move into a closed session. The question is on adoption of the motion to move into a closed session. All those in favour? Those opposed? The motion is carried and the time is uh, 8.07.